All right, uh, skill number two, this is video number three. Um, and what happens next is once you sort of have the basics down, right, of rectangles, squares, triangles, trapezoids, um, then you can start to look at um, more complex shapes, what we maybe call compound shapes, um, that are made of, uh, you know, those individual pieces, but themselves aren't necessarily any one thing, right? Um, and so our example here in the book um, is is an example of what what that would be. So a compound shape, you can sort of see there's triangle kind of stuff, trapezoid kind of stuff, you know, this rectangle kind of stuff happening here, but it's all kind of mixed up together. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is in some sense the, the two classic things finding my perimeter and finding my area um the perimeter here is not really anything super fancy um you're just going to sort of add up all the given values for the most part um until we learn a little bit of trigonometry we're not really going to be able to sort of pull uh missing length values out from anywhere without sort of knowing some extra math um, so for the most part, we're going to have to just be given all the different lengths, in which case, if we're given the lengths, we can just add them up to find the perimeter. So per perimeter here is no big deal. We could find the perimeter of a hundred-sided figure. You're just going to obviously have to take the time to add up a hundred different numbers. Um, the area here is a little bit more complex, right? And the, the strategy we're going to use is rather than try to come up with just like more and more complex formulas for area for different shapes. And obviously you can imagine you could sort of start, um, you know, copying and pasting all sorts of shapes all over the place and you have to come up with more formulas. That's kind of silly, don't do that. Um, so the idea is to just break down your compound figure into what would potentially be the sort of basic pieces, right? Break it down into simpler figures and uh, as long as you make sure there's no overlap between the figures that you're sort of breaking it down into, you can find the individual areas and then um, just add all the individual areas up to find the total area. In this case, right, so I've got, you know, uh, this again, trapezoid-ish kind of piece on top, this rectangle stuff on the bottom, and then some connector pieces. So one way that we could break this up, we sort of take this figure generally, you could do two vertical lines, so here and here, and that would break this up into three distinct shapes, all of which we could actually calculate, right? So you'd have a piece down here that looks like it's actually a square because it would be sort of 14 by 14. We'll, we'll carry all these values over when we actually crunch the numbers here. You have what looks like a bigger sort of rectangle in the middle, right? Kind of a, a, a tall and a little bit more narrow. So not a square. Um, we're gonna have to sort of calculate what these lengths are because we're not really directly given this, you know, height value or this like width, right? We're given the full length here, but we're not given this sort of partial value. So there's, there's a little bit of um, sort of reasoning here involved uh, where you're sort of looking across the figure from one side to the other and um, in some sense, assuming a certain amount of squareness that, that has to sort of be there to, to allow you to find all the different lengths. So, so we'll come to that in a second. So in theory, if we can kind of get these measurements, we could have this rectangle in the middle, this square here, and then a, a relatively nice triangle over here to sort of um, finish it off, right? So the total area would be sort of one, two, three, different areas added up together. So we'll just flip to the next page, and this is gonna help us take us through how to do all these setups. Hang on, let me just make a bunch of noise, shuffle these papers all over. That makes for a great video. All right, so what have we got? Um, so we said, oh, that's interesting. Let me see if I can have this other piece handy. Uh, I'd like to have the original as a little bit of a reference. I think that's visible. All right, very well done. Very well indeed. Um, anyway, so we have this square 14 by 14. 
that's the square here down in the corner. Obviously the area there is just gonna be 14 times 14, which is 196. Everything here is in centimeters, so that's gonna be squared centimeters. So that would take care of the square in the left-hand corner. We're just given 14 and 14, so that's relatively easy to find. Now, the next piece in the middle, right, comes from the middle here. Whoops, uh, how to show you both of these things not very easily. Uh, I got it. Make sure whenever you're making videos for your class that you give yourself plenty of time to fold sheets of paper. There we go. Not a problem at all. So, for the second piece, this is this sort of rectangle in the middle, right? Um, the section sort of here to here. So you say, okay, how do I know this is 26? Well, the answer is I know this is 40 all the way across, and I used up 14 over here. So I know this is 26 because that's the total 40 minus the 14 centimeters that I used for the first one, right? So the width here is gonna be 26. Now, what about this sort of like height value? So, okay, this says it's 46. How do I know it's 46? Well, uh, coming at it from the other side, now I know this piece, which is part of it, is 32. The piece that I'm missing here would match the 14 that's here. So, you know, one of the things that usually well, folks will say is, um, right, uh, don't necessarily make assumptions about the size of things. You have to sort of go off the values that you're given. Um, I, I will say here in our compound figures, if, if things uh, appear that they're sort of square corners, right? You can kind of assume that into something directly across from it that seems to sort of stop and start at the same values. That's a safe assumption. So my 46 here is coming from, right, 32 plus this 14. So my values here, 46 and 26, are not, neither of those is sort of originally given, but I'm sort of pulling them out of the figure once I start to sort of break it up. So 46 times 26, that would be 1196, 1196 square centimeters, Oops, which is a value that now you can see, which you couldn't see before. So what does that leave me with? Well, what that leaves me with is the triangle, right? So this triangle sort of in the upper right-hand corner. And so same kind of reasoning, how are we supposed to find these lengths. So we sort of have this value here and then this value here. So how are we going to do this? Well, what do we know? We know this is 50 all the way across. We know this was 40, but then when we cut it, we saw that this piece was 26. So that means if this is 26, up here it's 26, which gets me out to here. And so the 24 here is gonna be 50 minus the 26 that we had used before, right? So that gets me the 24. What about the 26 here? Well, the total length, right, from top to bottom here was 46. I'm gonna subtract off the 20 centimeters that's here, and that would leave me with 26, so that's 46 minus 20 to get this 26. Um, this we need, right? So we're gonna do this as a triangle, right? One half base times height. Um, in this case, right, which is the base here and which is the height? We have this sort of nice 90 degree corner. So in some sense, it doesn't particularly matter which is the base and which is the height. They're kind of interchangeable, 24 and 26. If we do 24 times 26 times one half, that would get us to 312. What about our total area? The total area then is those three sections all added together, right? Area one, area two, area three, 196, 11, 96, and 312. So they're gonna add up to 1704 squared centimeters, right? So we don't need to, um, uh, 
change the units there, right? We're just getting squared centimeters and squared centimeters and we're adding them up. We get another square centimeter. Okay, so that's pretty fun. Now, what would be more fun would be taking the exact same problem and then doing it again, question mark? Sure, that sounds like fun. Um, so one thing about these compound figures is for the most part, there's more than one way to sort of look at them and break them down and sort of take them apart. So the one that we just did, we sort of did vertical lines here and here. What I'm gonna propose is instead, how about two horizontal lines? And so what we're gonna get is sort of a trapezoid for region one, a really sort of short wide rectangle for number two, and then a second rectangle for number three. Um, and then the question of course is how big is all this stuff? So let's see if we can't figure it out. So there's my figure one. Kind of take these apart. Figure two. And figure three. So let's sort of find all these measurements. Let's see if we can't kind of jump across all of them at the same time a little bit. Um, we know this is 50 over the top. We know this is 40 all along the bottom. Um, we know this is 14. So the area here is just gonna be 14 times 40. Quick calculation. That would be 560. square centimeters. Um, what about this guy, the skinny guy here? So if I know this is 14, but I know this plus this is 20, that must mean that this is six. And then going across, we actually have this value from the last version, but if we were starting it from scratch, if I know the, all, the full distance here is 40, but 14 of them are here, that would be 40 minus 14, it would be 26 here. So that area would be six times 26. Quick calculation, that's 156 square centimeters. Um, so then I can reuse some of this information, right? If this is 26, then this is 26, then this is 26. For my trapezoid, what I need, right, are my two bases. So base one and base two, I've got it. What I need that I'm missing is this height value. I know from this, the full height was 32 down to here, but then that uh, sort of short and wide piece, the height on that was six. So 32 minus six uh, would be 26. So then these and these, I guess, are the same length. Do they look the same? Well, they don't not look the same. Um, and what's my area formula for a trapezoid? So one half, base one plus base two, 50 plus 26, times my height, which is also 26. This is 76. So 76 times 26. Divide by two, 988. Square centimeters, right? So three different regions, three different areas. Moment of truth. Our total area should be area one plus area two plus area three. Let's see if we're gonna end up in the same spot as the one we just did plus one, five, six, plus five, six, zero, nine, eight, eight, plus one, five, six, plus five, six, zero, 1704. Uh, I don't remember. Yes, that is, uh, just as I always planned. And that's that.